It has to be a significant embarrassment when a production manages to secure a highly sought after actor for a series that he's enthusiastic about, only to produce a show that is not only dreadfully dull, but also an affront to the original source material, to the extent that the actor himself departs. That's so very, very sad. Watching The Witcher, especially during the initial episodes of season two, was a challenge for me. I must admit, the only reason I even decided to watch The Witcher in the first place was because of Henry Cavill. And did you know what I started to notice? Despite the show being called The Witcher, it felt like he was barely in it. And I started to realize that it probably felt that way because the focus was all over the place. And not particularly on him but mainly on Siri. Now, many individuals are quick to make assumptions, asserting that if we express even slight criticism of something we watch on a paid subscription or a streaming service, we are somehow part of a group that just wants to hate on things without justification. Interesting. That narrative seems to span across the entirety of entertainment industries nowadays. The people that you least expected to join the train of willful ignorance and entitlement are the showrunners themselves. Okay, because insulting the audience always works out so well. In an interview with Polish news site Borska, I don't know how to pronounce that, Beginski gave many reasons why changes were made to The Witcher show that deviated from the books and short stories, including production chaos and unforeseen issues like actors falling ill, all of which strike me as eminently reasonable before saying this. Mind you, this is from Forbes. He says, when a series is made for huge mass of viewers with different experiences from different parts of the world and a large part of them are Americans, these simplifications not only make sense, they're necessary. It's painful for us and for me too. But the higher level of nuance and complexity will have a smaller range that won't reach people. Sometimes it may go too far, but we have to make these decisions and accept them. Boy, if you don't get- Tell me you're a prejudice entitled asshole without telling me you're a prejudice entitled asshole. This piss poor excuse for a producer blames young Americans, not himself for the piss poor quality that the show has become. He blames American audiences even though these are the same audiences that were propping up and could not get enough of Game of Thrones at least until season 8. I mean, when the patronizing arrogant entitled moron is this person, did this mook also forget that the people loved the first season of The Witcher? <laughs> It's quite ironic because it feels as though The Witcher is trying so hard to be Game of Thrones that it comes off as cringy as a 500 pound person trying to cosplay Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. My focus was completely off the show when I realized that we weren't getting enough of the very reason I started watching it in the first place. Henry freaking Cavill someone you'll never be. Be cold. I mean, the stupid writers are also trying to focus so much on shaping people's opinions and playing activists that they have forgotten they're supposed to be actually writing a show. Her brain is gone, they say end up doing the very opposite because these people that you want to represent in a good light and you end up making them look bad by making your show shit. The Witcher franchise is based on a series of novels and short stories so it's not like they don't have source material. You have all the video games as well so it's understandable when fans that you're trying to draw in by using the franchise's name express disappointment with changes made in the adaptation feeling like certain elements of the story and the characters or the world building were just completely lost or misrepresented. You bait and switch the fans that you're trying to draw into watching the show and then change it up until it's basically unrecognizable. Barely have the main character focused on at all. And then when they bitch and complain about this, which is completely warranted at this point, you gaslight them and scold them as though you're their parents and insult them. And you do this in the hopes and the expectation that they should just open their mouth and swallow your monster cream filled sausage just because you say so or else. It's quite the empty threat because exactly what are the writers and showrunners going to do to us because we don't like their shitty product? Do the showrunners actually believe that by insulting the fans, the fans are going to suddenly just look up to them and have an epiphany and realize that they've been wrong all along? Are the fans of the franchise going to suddenly say, oh dear lord, oh, you are so right, writers. I would gladly open my mouth so you can stuff the piss-soaked eggs down my throat and have it permeate my insides for maximum nutrition. What the fuck? 
Fans of the original works often have a strong emotional connection with the material, which is why these companies utilize the names of these franchises so they can bring these people in because they realize there's money to be made since, I mean, these are the very fans that are throwing their money at the books and at the video games and all other works that go along with the franchise. And all that ends up happening is when the fans call out the creators for not adhering to the franchise or by pointing out the fact that the creators have been deceptive or the franchise no longer feels like the franchise, their concerns or criticisms are dismissed or blame for the show's struggles. Oh, man. And you know what ends up happening? The showrunners stick it to the fans and then the fans take their money and bounce and the show fails. No matter how much the showrunners try to blame the people whose money they want, all that ends up happening is that not only is your show shit and everyone then knows it's shit, but now everyone knows you're a piece of shit too. You're a piece of shit. You have now successfully shifted the focus from a horrible product to you now being a horrible human being and very unprofessional, entitled, and someone who people can now recognize they should stay far away from. If your name is attached to anything in the future like Dan and Dave. And the only reason I know those two bozos' names is because of how badly they messed up Game of Thrones Season 8 because they simply didn't care anymore. Now this is just coming from the perspective of fans who know the lore and source material, but I'm a little bit different in that regard. You see, I only played a tiny part of The Witcher and by a tiny, I mean like 15 minutes. I definitely wanted to play more, but I lost the key for the game for some reason and just never got around to getting it again. But Henry Cavill made me interested in wanting to see it, and the first season, even though it had its issues, definitely made me want to invest in this world. I loved watching Henry and following him during his journey, but then the very same thing started to happen, like what happened with The Mandalorian, and it's the same thing that seems to happen with a lot of modern shows nowadays, which is to let's take the focus off the original male character and start putting more focus on everybody else, specifically the female characters. While it's not bad to have a diverse cast of other people, the show is called The Witcher. <laughs> I, I know this... This concept is hard to grasp, but for a show called The Witcher or The Mandalorian, which focuses on the main character for most of the show, or at the inception of it, it is to be expected that people know this is the main character and they're going to be following this character's footsteps, or mostly their story, for the journey. I mean, movies like Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron did it well because the movie was called Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. And do you know who the main character was that we focused on in every freaking scene? Spirit! Stallion of the Cimarron. Bambi, an old classic Disney movie, had the focus on guess who? Bambi. Balto had the focus on Balto. Spider-Man had the focus on guess who? I know, crazy, right? Spider-Man. Venom had the focus on Venom and his relationship with Tom Hardy. Aladdin had the focus on Aladdin. Crazy. The Punisher had the focus on Shane. Sorry, The Punisher. A pattern's beginning to emerge. I mean, this isn't rocket science. And this is something that has occurred throughout entertainment. Whenever you have a titular character or a work named after a specific character, the expectation is clear. The story is going to center around that character and the audience will follow their journey. It's a straightforward understanding that informs the way stories have been told for generations. Goodness gracious, even Loki, one of the better Disney Plus Plus Marvel works that has its own issues too, focus on everything Loki. Blade focuses on Blade. The Righteous Gemstones focuses on the Righteous Gemstones. Or the family thereof. So if you, if you guys have not watched this show, you really need to get on this because it's freaking hilarious. Barry focuses on Barry. Even for shows that don't have a focused subject in the title, like House of the Dragon, they do a better job focusing on the different characters and making them feel fleshed out and not just turning at the last minute and discarding them or making you feel as though you're not getting what you signed up for. I mean, who knows, right? Because we saw how Game of Thrones turned out, but still. It is very deceptive for writers or showrunners to take a franchise that they know they have no intention of actually seeing through or sticking with the source material for the sake of what? Activism? It's a disgusting practice and is one that has been shown time and time again to fail miserably. But they do say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Don't know if I want to be a part of just some insane ass people making what they think is entertainment when they have no grasp on the actual concept. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.